This is the Canon PowerShot V10, and when I bought it, I honestly thought I'd hate it, but after using it for a few days, I might want to keep it. The Canon V10 has a one inch 20 megapixel sensor that is capable of shooting 4K up to 30 frames per second, which is actually pretty dang good. It is also able to take photos, although it is only JPEG photos, so that's a little bit silly, although it is taking advantage of the full 5K sensor when you're shooting those JPEG photos in the larger format. Other things that it's able to do, 1080p at 60 FPS, and it does have various different digital crop modes, so if you need to punch in on this 19 millimeter f2.8 lens, you do have that option. Now, the Canon V10 does not have internal image stabilization. However, it does have digital stabilization. When you turn it on, it does crop in on the image, and then additionally, you can turn it on to enhance, and it crops in even more. But it's not really too big of a deal because you do have that 19 millimeter lens, which is wider than most cameras of this size, meaning that you don't really have to hold out your arm too, too far to still frame yourself in when shooting those selfie shots. Now, one of the cool things about the Canon V10 is that it has built-in ND. It is toggleable on and off, but there's also a really cool feature called Auto ND, which means that it'll turn it on whenever you need it and turn it off when you don't need it. So if you're shooting on a bright sunny day, it'll turn it on, it's like sunglasses for your camera. And then if you don't need it, like you go inside, it'll automatically turn it off so you don't have to think about it. So I've actually been testing the Canon V10 for a couple of days now. In fact, I shot a bunch with Zach Mayfield the other day. I think I know what you're talking about. And then you'll cut there. Yeah, and go to the next then, scene. And then, and then, and we discovered a few various different things about it. For example, you do have a lot of different story picture profile modes. The unfortunate thing is, is it's not those standard Canon ones that we all know and love. It's some pretty wild other ones. You got like story orange and teal and red highlights, whatever nonsense. Basically imagine, 2000, if you're old enough, 2012 Instagram filters. That's what they look like. They're, they look terrible. I was going through the different modes and I found retro green. <laughs> look how- Is it just incredible hole? Oh, here, I'm gonna flip up the screen for you. Look at this. Oh! <laughs> That's so- It's like a really sad documentary. It's like this guy just lost his wife. And unfortunately you can't customize them to bring down the contrast and the saturation or whatever else. So I do still like this camera, but that is maybe one negative about it so far. So one of the cool things about the V10 is that you have these two microphone pickups here on the top. And when you're vlogging with it, it actually sounds pretty good out of the gate. So currently now I am vlogging on the Canon V10. I have it in auto everything. So I really wanted to see kind of how it's gonna go. One of the things about it though, is that it does have two little microphone pickups on the top. And so I am curious how it's going to sound because that's also an automatic mode. By the way, Zach's here. Howdy, frickers. <laughs> However, if these mics aren't good enough for you, you actually do get a microphone jack, which I was very surprised to see on this camera. So you could plug in something like a lavalier or a boom mic to get even better audio. So I have my Rode Wireless Go 2 plugged in right now. And, how are we doing? And I'm able to walk pretty far away. I should watch where I'm going. I, I'm able to walk pretty far away uh, and still get, supposedly, I don't know how it sounds, clean audio. So another really cool feature and kind of an underrated feature in my opinion is that you can just plug it in over USB-C and use this thing as a webcam directly from your computer. So you don't need any extra converter box or you don't need any app software on your computer. You just plug it in and select it as your camera and it works great. So some of the specs on this camera are pretty good and some of them are kind of lackluster. So why do I like this camera? And really what it comes down to is it's form factor and unique design. This little flip screen that pops up on the top is great. The overall shape of the camera being like you, almost like you hold a phone instead of how you typically hold a camera like a grip is wonderful for what it is. This little kickstand that pops down and you can set it down on things to vlog or whatever is a really smart design. I think really what it comes down to this camera is it's small enough to fit in my pocket and I don't really have to think about it. I can set it on all automatic modes and use it in place of my cell phone. Now, does it look better than my cell phone? It definitely looks different than my cell phone. The iPhone does do some pretty great things when it comes to the double exposure, so it's exposing for the shadows and the highlights, but it still looks like an iPhone. There's that iPhone-ness to it. I do like that this still looks like a camera, even if it's a really crunchy picture profile. 
there's still something nice about it being separate from my phone. I think this camera really reminds me of those flip cameras from way back in the day. Remember those? I used to have a lime green one as a kid and I loved it. I would just turn it on and start hitting record. I didn't have to think about anything because I was a kid and I didn't think about much anyways. This is a lot like that. However, you do still get some of the nice things like you can put it into manual mode and control exposure and you can control your white balance, but that's really not the point. The point is to turn on auto ND, auto everything and just hit on, flip up the screen, big red button in the front, record, and just start making content, right? You know, I really find the Canon V10 to just be kind of fun. I, I like that Canon took a little bit more of a risk to make a whimsical, charming camera that doesn't really look like a camera that we're used to. I like that it looks more like a phone when you're holding it, but it still shoots a 16 by nine image. It's just really interesting. And I think that's kind of why I like this camera. Now, obviously this camera still has a couple of issues. The 1080p, for example, doesn't look very good. Again, you can't customize the picture profiles. The autofocus is contrast-based autofocus, although it does look pretty dang good still because it does have that Digic X processor in it, so it's able to do some magic, but still, it's not dual pixel autofocus. But that doesn't really seem to hinder it too much because of what it is. It really is its own unique camera in its own unique market. So David Altizer, the man holding the camera right now, thank you, Dave. Um, he and I on the Golden Hour podcast did talk a little bit more in detail about the V10. So if you're interested in that, definitely go check it out. But we also heard rumors that they are making something called a Canon V100, which is gonna be a slightly improved version of this camera with like dual pixel autofocus and other things like that. So it does seem like Canon's going to continue this line into the future, which I'm pretty excited for because this thing is really interesting. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked this video, I think you're gonna love this one. I hope that you all have a fantastic week and I will see you all in the next one. Take it easy, guys.